When we left off last time, Bandmade was fully formed and preparing to make their major label debut. But this process wasn't without its struggles. It's easy to look at Bandmade now and see how far they've come and how amazing their sound and community is and assume that once these five superstars came together, everything was magical and just fell into place. But there was actually a point where they almost had to quit altogether. Like most things in life, Bandmade didn't just pop into existence one day and take the rock world by storm. The members of the band, along with their management, had to work very hard to get where they are. So today, I'm going to talk about the struggles of the early years. But for those of you new to the group, Bandmade is an all-girl rock band from Japan formed in 2013 who aims to defy and far exceed expectations with their look and sound. I know for me personally, I never expected such a well-crafted and jaw-dropping rock sound to come out of five girls in maid outfits, but now I know I was completely wrong to judge a book by its cover. Now in my previous Bandmade mini-doc video, I covered the general formation of Bandmade, and I'd like to go more in depth into each individual's history leading up to and around that time. But first, I'm going to cover the early years of the band itself. Before I start, I have two corrections from the last video, thanks to viewers' comments. First, the band had only been playing together for a month before Psyche joined. She had joined four months after Kabato started working on her idea. Also, Kabato had been part of a pop idol group called Lil Cumin in 2012, a year before Bandmade was formed, so she did have some experience being in a musical group. Thank you, Thomas Rottweiler, for those corrections. Now, let's go back to August of 2013. Bandmade was fully formed, and they began to play shows at small venues around Tokyo, without much of an audience. They were playing songs written and selected for them by their talent agency. Then, on January 8th, 2014, just five months after becoming a band, they released their first album, Made in Japan, featuring eight tracks. The band collaborated with two other musicians and writers for Made in Japan. One of them, Kentaro Akutsu, was credited for Be OK, Key, By My Tears, and Forward, and another writer, Masahiko Fukui, was credited for Knockin' on Your Heart, Big Dad, Before Dawn, and Evergreen. And I think it's important to recognize the impact that these writers had on helping Bandmade form their sound. Many great Bandmade songs on the first three albums were written by other people, including the song that would launch them into international popularity, which was also written by Kentaro Akutsu. Now with the release of this first album, the band began its tradition of giving Kabato one track on the album to sing lead vocals on, which was Big Dad on this release. A month after the release, Bandmade played a one-man live show at Shibuya Milky Way titled Made in Japan after the album. Now for those not familiar with the Japanese music industry, a one-man show is just a concert where the featured artist is the only act to play. Maybe you already knew that, but when I first heard the term, I was confused. But unfortunately, for the first several months after release, the album never charted. At first, it looked like Kabato's big dream for a rock band with a made aesthetic could be a flop and this was on the minds of the talent agency. Unbeknownst to the maids, the agency was starting to worry that this band wouldn't be a worthy investment and began to consider dropping them. But they had one more release planned, a new single entitled Love, Passion, Matador, or Matador of Love and Passion, depending on the translation. It was scheduled for release on August 13th, 2014. The single also had a B-side coming with it entitled Thrill which I actually just released a cover of, featuring Mew, where I recorded all the parts during live streams. Anyway, they also planned to release a music video for Love Passion Matador alongside the single, but something else was brewing behind the scenes. The members of Bandmade had no idea at the time, but the management company had planned for this single to be Bandmade's final release. After this, they would drop Bandmade from their roster and stop funding any future projects. But let's talk about the B-side to the single, Thrill. Thrill was different from anything Bandmade had released up to this point. It was the closest the band had come to what they really wanted their sound to be, which was variations on hard rock and even heavy metal. Miku Kabato envisioned that from the start, having a shocking juxtaposition of cute maid outfits with impossibly hard rockin' music. The members of the band felt that Thrill would be a better choice to make a music video for. They loved the combination of the double kick drums and the heavy guitar riffs with sweeping and tapping solos, along with a slapping bass solo and powerful anthemic lyrics. They wanted to stand out, and in their minds, the harder they rocked, 
the larger the gap would be between them and the pop groups that were more common at the time. And that's a sentiment that us fans have come to really appreciate, because they've 100% accomplished that goal. They really stand out as a special band. So, the band changed the plan for the music video, and instead, they made a music video for Thrill, which was released on YouTube November 20th, 2014. And the response to this release was also different. People noticed the technical skills and the powerful lyrics. At this point, the band still didn't know that they were about to end, and although the music video was being well received, it didn't quite blow up. But suddenly, Bandmate and its members started getting a ton of new followers, not just from Japan, but from all over the world. At first they were worried that their account had been hacked or something, but then Konami found out that Thrill had been shared on an English Facebook page of an online radio station, J-Rock Radio, on April 9th, 2015, which projected it to international audiences. Now, it turns out that J-Rock Radio had actually reached out to Bandmate via email about featuring Thrill, but the email was in English and they hadn't done anything to target an international audience yet, so the manager just assumed it was spam email. Konami had actually found a tweet that J-Rock Radio tagged Bandmate in, wondering if Thrill would hit 2 million views, which it did shortly after. So Konami responded to their tweet, I am very happy. Thank you all for the Bandmate introduction. This was an awesome part for me to learn about while researching this, because it's so easy to see Bandmate as a bunch of rock superstars, but this grounds them in reality for me because it's a reminder that they had to work hard to deal with obstacles along the way and overcoming failures just like every musician has to deal with. Seeing Konami's giddy response to getting a boost like this reminds me of what it felt like when Yoyoka first commented on one of my videos, then made the effort to come visit my studio. I had been struggling to make music a regular part of my life for almost 30 years, but that one act of kindness changed the trajectory of my life forever. The value that I saw the Soma family put into my skills asking me to come play a show with them the day after we met and first jammed together, it gave me a new confidence in my own skills and a new energy for music in general. And similarly, this new boost of recognition for the hard work of the band gave Bandmade the confidence to keep going and restored their management's faith in the concept. But as the music video got more traction, many skeptical comments flowed in from people wondering if the maids were really playing their instruments, and I admit that would have been my first thought too. But Kabato loves that contrast and feels that the difference between their look and their sound is what makes them interesting. More comments on the video compared the sound of Thrill to American Rock, even saying that Bandmade was like the Japanese Beatles because each member had a unique persona and Kabato was using a John Lennon style Rickenbacker. Now, during a 2021 interview with Tokion, Kabato said Bandmade was about to end after two years of starting the band, but we were saved by our overseas audience and we were able to continue as we were getting good responses from them. Psyche followed that up with, We were told sometime later that was going to be your last release, and we all went, What? So we're all here because of Thrill. And I just love that the band actually credits their audience and fans for the success that they've had, because it's a really special thing to see a band valuing their fans so much and giving them that dignity. Later in that interview, Kabato commented, Ever since Shoya, there weren't that many girls doing hard rock in Japan, so people were surprised when they saw us and said, I can't believe there's a rock band like this in Japan. Now, although the maids never could have imagined that they'd come this far, they'd always had the desire to go international and target a worldwide audience from the beginning. According to Psyche, all five of them unanimously wanted to do the same type of music, so that made it easy to move forward. She also remarked that in other bands, if there's one member that's off, it just messes up the entire band. But with Bandmade, that has never been the case. And so, the maids overcame their first big hurdle and found their target demographic. They were going to continue making music with a hard rock, heavy metal edge, and shocking rock fans around the world with that heavy sound coming from five cute girls dressed up as maids. And next time, we'll talk about the beginning of their international success and the path to where they are now. 
Thank you so much for watching and thank you for the wonderfully kind response on my last Bandmade documentary video. Now if you're new, be sure to join the Bandmade community discord linked in the pinned comment below and get to know the kind of awesome community that Bandmade brings together. Also, I'm part of a live stream podcast every Sunday called Gaijin Guys, where we talk about Japanese music news, so I'll link that below as well. Now in honor of Thrill, the song that literally saved Bandmade, I've made my own cover featuring a singer named Named Mew and all of the instrumental parts in the cover were recorded during live streams so it's kind of an interesting cover if you want to check it out. I also have a Patreon if you want to help support these videos where I do patron request reactions as well as many patron exclusive reactions including some live bandmade shows and I also live stream on Twitch with my wife Rosie who helped with the recent Thrill cover where we take requests for reactions. Usually that's on Wednesdays and Fridays or Saturdays depending on the week schedule. Anyway that's where I'm going to wrap it up so so thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.